Hey guys, welcome back and welcome if you're new. Today I'm gonna be sharing with you guys what's in my home birth kit. All the supplies that I need for a home birth kit I will be sharing with you guys today. For those of you who are new, I am pregnant with our third child. I'm currently 39 weeks pregnant. So this is a little late coming, this video. Um, I have been planning on making this video right around 37 weeks and things just got away with me and so anyway, I'm making it now. Baby isn't here yet. Baby could be here any day now. Kind of hoping today or this week, um, but we'll see. <laughs> so I want to get this film before baby comes. Um, but yeah, so I had a home birth with my daughter. She's my second born. And with my son, I actually prepared for a home birth but was transferred to the hospital. So there's three different times that I've been preparing, uh, that I've prepared for a home birth. And with this baby, we're also preparing for a home birth. So. Um, I've done this a couple times and so I'm excited to get in into this with you. So let's go ahead and I'll show you what's in my birth kit. Alright, so in our bedroom is where the birth kit and the baby supplies are. So this is my actual birth kit. Um, I have it all in one area um, just so it's easy to access when the baby, um, when I start to be in labor. Um, and so when labor starts, I mean. And then I also have a little Moses basket over here that will eventually just go to, um, right next to me, to my side of the bed. Um, but I just have it over here for now. And so, yeah, let's go ahead and I'll open, open this up and show you what's in my birth kit. All right, so I went ahead and laid everything out on the bed that was in my birth kit. That way it's just a little easier to show you what's in there. Um, but I do keep it all in there until my midwife needs it or I need it or whatever. Um, so anyway, we'll start over here. But um, right here I've got some lubricant, lubricant jelly. Um, I have a lot of it because I've been either given it or it's from previous birth kits. So because I've had more than one child and already have had a home birth, I have bought that before. But lubricating jelly, lots of that. This is mostly for um, just the Doppler um, when the midwife is going to go over it with my belly. Um, so that I just have a lot of that for that um, and then some alcohol prep pads these are just something my midwife likes to keep in the birth kit um, just have there in case I need it or she or she needs it these are latex gloves um, size medium these are the ones for my midwife to use then we've got some hair ties those are just nice to have in there in case she can't find them or I run out or whatever there's just extra and then we've got gauze pads. Those are great. Also something my midwife likes to have at the birth. Q-tips. Um, those are something that's great also. And then these are disposable blue pads. These are like the big, big thick pads you put underneath like while you're in labor so that like if you have amniotic fluid leaking or whatever, but it's also great for after the birth um, and when you're bleeding a lot. Uh, put this under you wherever you're sitting. So yeah, anyway, lots of those two uh, Ziploc bags gallon size um, Those are for the placenta I believe and then we've got these are poly paper um, They're also a type of like sheet that you're gonna lay on your bed when you're in labor <clears throat> or cervical checks or whatever Just an extra sheet that's disposable that if anything gets on it She can just take it off and throw it away but anyway, so that's another thing that she, uh, that my midwife specifically asks for that I buy in my actual birth kit. Straws. These are for just if I need to drink water out of a, out of straw, out of a straw, um, or whatever. There's a couple other things I think she uses this for, but straws. This is a shower curtain. This will go underneath the birth pool so that there's no that no water gets on the rug and so the water can kind of just stay it'll help keep the water at bay and in one area <clears throat> and then this is a cookie sheet I don't remember why she has this in the birth prep kit but anyway it's there it's something to do with the placenta I believe but anyway a cookie sheet <laughs> um, and it'll be covered in foil I believe too but anyway then I have these sheets I don't care about. Uh, this is for when, bef well, when you start laboring, you're gonna want to cover your bed in a sheets, in sheets that you don't care about. So yeah, this is just a fitted sheet and pillowcases, and then this is, and then underneath that is a um, plastic sheet to go underneath these, so that um, you're just your your mattress is protected from blood or 
whatever. So if you have the baby on your bed, which I don't plan on doing, but I've had, you know, you have the baby where you have the baby, okay? So prepare for anything. And um, even if you don't have your baby on the bed, you're gonna be doing a lot of time in the bed. So like whether you have, you know, fluids leaking or whatever, that will protect your mattress. So then I have a bowl for the placenta. <coughs> um, this is especially for when you're in the birth pool and you, you know, the placenta is born and you put it in there while it floats in the water. So anyway, that's for, I have a bowl there. Oh, I am so out of breath, you guys. Definitely 39 weeks pregnant. Oy, oy, oy. <laughs> Over here, I have um, ink um, and the welcome, the baby welcome pamphlet. Anyway, you'll put baby's name and um, weight and all the different instruction, instructions, all the different details of the baby on here. It's like a kind of like a birth certificate slash welcoming certificate. And then you can put, you use the ink for their little feet and you can put their feet prints and fingerprints or hand prints and fingerprints, hand prints and footprints on here. So anyway, that's what that's for. Roll of toilet paper just to have in there. Um, this is a homemade rice hot pack so in case I need some heat that'll be nice to have this is a no sucker which I we probably won't even use especially if I have a water birth but it's nice to have and I've just had it for forever I didn't use it with Kyla so I might not use it with this baby either but anyway it's there and then these are lancets that's if I want to do the newborn screen test um, which they'd prick the baby's heel for that um, or for anything really, but to have lancets on hand. This is a cord clamp. <clears throat> I probably won't use this. This was just in one of my previous birth kits. I think I've just kind of held on to it. Um, we'll, I'll be using a cord tape, which is what this is, to wrap around the umbilical cord um, for the belly button part. And then this is a measuring tape to measure baby or whatever with. My midwife already has one, but it's just nice to have an extra in there just in case. Um, and then I kind of forgot these two things, but I have two Winco foods, but anyway, I have two paper bags, big ones, and then I have two small ones. This one I believe is for when, you know, if you throw up or whatever, uh, they're just nice to have. And then these, I'm not 100% sure why she has them. Something to do with trash, I think, but anyway. So that's what's in my overall birth kit. Um, and so I'm actually very simple too. Like this is just really what's on my midwife's list of things that she likes to have on hand for the birth. And then I have a couple things that I've added, which is just essentially like this thing, which I probably won't even use. Um, and most everything else is, you know, she's requested me to get, um, except for, yeah, I think that's it. So anyway, and then now, Real quickly, I wanted to show you these. So these are the clean bags. These are the, um, you're gonna have, well here, I'll just show you really quick. So at 36 weeks, my midwife has me create three different clean bags. And what they are essentially is, you'll have bag number one, here I'll get them lined up here. Bag number one is a flat sheet and two full size bath towels. Um, the reason why we keep these in paper sacks is to keep them clean for the birth. Um, so what you do is you wash all the supplies you're going to need for each bag. Then you're going to dry them on high heat and then throw them immediately in your paper bags and seal them. And that way they stay fairly um, at least clean, not necessarily sanitized, but clean. And a lot of times you don't really need a whole lot of sanitized things. You just need them clean. So anyway, um, but that's in bag one. And then bag two has receiving blankets and a newborn hat. And then this right here is the last bag. And this has two full, two full size bath towels and six washcloths. And this is all stuff that the midwife is going to use at the birth. And so especially if you have a water birth, you're going to want lots of extra towels and stuff. But that's really just for the birth in general. If you don't have a water birth, you still need those. It's just clean towels, washcloths, receiving blankets, all those things you're going to need for a whole birth. Then real quickly, I'll show you a couple th extra things I have here. Um, next to my birth kit is a fan because it gets hot and it is June, end of June, and it's getting warm. So nice to have a fan on hand. And then 
back here, I have hose. I've got two different hoses actually, but they are drinking water hoses and those will be to fill the birth pool up with. So I'm just leaving those here. The one of one of them is brand new. The this one on the other hand I did re I have I'm reusing it from my previous birth. Um, the only way you can do that is by bleaching the hose really well because this was used to also siphon out the dirty water <laughs> after having a baby. So anyway, um, and I also haven't had a baby in water yet, but it's still fairly dirty when you're laboring in there. But um, I just bleached it really good, and so that should be fine. Um, you can do that. I would definitely talk to your midwife whether what she wants you to do. But I also bought a new one because I think we need more hose than just this one. So anyway, and then I also have over here, I have blankets and sheets ready for when the baby comes. I have some carriers and nursing covers. This is a Moby wrap that I actually might use while in labor to kind of just support my stomach, like wrap it around and pull it behind me so that I can kind of lift, <laughs> lift up on my stomach. Um, and it might help take off some of the pressure and also get baby really well aligned in my pelvis. So anyway, and then I have a nice warm blanket here for the baby. Um, Again, we don't know what the gender is, so all of this is gender neutral, most of it, except for this carrier. <laughs> but it's really for me anyway, so whatever. But yeah, so that's what I have prepared in my room for the labor and the delivery. Also wanted to mention that over here, <coughs> by my side of the bed, there's a drawer full of uh, gender neutral baby clothes. So I've got a couple like newborn jammies and onesies, um, some shoes, some hats. So that's just gonna be for the first couple of days with baby. Um, and then whatever baby's gender is, we'll get out all the different clothes I had packed away from his brother and sister, or her brother and sister. Anyway, we'll just, whatever baby it is, we'll get the baby clothes out that I have packed away. So, and then we'll go from there, so have those all prepped for when baby comes. And then in my bathroom, I just try to have um, enough extra towels for the birth, extra pads and stuff, but that's more along the lines of postpartum, which will be a different video. But, um, you know, I've got washcloths and stuff like that to just extra for the birth, and especially if you're having a water birth. Like, have lots of extra towels. Yeah, anyway, so. Lots of extra towels, because you're gonna need it. I also forgot to tell you, um, this is also part of the birth kit, kind of, but um, she, my midwife, asks to have a small bottle of olive oil just uh, for the perineal packs, um, which I think is more geared towards, toward postpartum, but she likes to have it um, in the birth kit area. But this is our bathroom, so I just leave it in here. And then, like, my midwife likes us to have like all the stuff we want ready for the birth, ready and prepared and one of those things is I like to have essential oils while I am birthing um, laboring anyway um, and so all my essential oils are over here so they're already very accessible and so I just keep them up there I don't need to put them in the actual birth kit um, but yeah and there's other random things that my midwife likes to have on hand for the birth and a lot of the times those are just already on hand like she likes to have a big pot or crock pot on hand which is in my kitchen and so which is over there um don't mind my son's toys but um but yeah anyway and so over here is the last thing that is part of my birth kit and this my midwife actually dropped off it's hers um at 36 weeks so at 36 weeks she dropped off her birth pool. I do not have one, and so she has one that she just um, gives to her clients, the um, one the one client that's closest to her due date, or who's closest to giving birth, she gives out a, the, her birth pool to have at their house so that it's just ready to go um, when I'm in labor. And so when I'm in labor, my husband will blow this up and have it ready, and probably somewhere over in the living room area, um, just, He'll blow that up and we'll start filling it up and all that kind of stuff. And then this is the birth pool liner that goes in the pool. And then a couple other things she has in here just to go with the pool and there's the pump to blow it up. So anyway, so that is the birth pool and we just have that ready 
for whenever this baby decides to start making an appearance. So anyway, another crucial thing that I have is actually this um, yoga ball or exercise ball, pregnancy ball, whatever you wanna call it, but it is crucial in labor, um, before labor. It's actually crucial for just pregnancy in general, but very crucial when you're in labor, super great. And um, so, so I have that, and I use this on a regular basis anyway, so that's there, but I'll also be using this um, while in labor. All right guys, so I hope you enjoyed that. I hope it was helpful to some of you who are just maybe, this is your first home birth, and you're like, what do I even prepare for? Maybe you're having a birth um, and you're doing an, an assisted and would like some more info on like, what should I really prepare for? Um, I hope that maybe this was able to help you a little bit into what I've prepared for, for my births and for this birth precisely. Every time I add a little something, take something away sometimes, um, but for the most part, this is what I always have on hand when I'm in labor and when I have a baby. So anyway. Man, I'm just out of breath. <clears throat> anyway, <sighs> you know, babies drop at the end of pregnancy, sort of, uh, but it doesn't matter. I'm still out of breath. <laughs> anyway, so yeah, guys, that is what is in my home birth kit. That is what I prepare for my home birth, and that's really as simple as it gets. Um, you, Some people even do simpler than I do, so, but you can make it. Everyone's birth kit is slightly different than the next, especially it can depend on your midwife, it can depend on your area, it can depend on you as a person, what you like, what you dislike, and so it all just very much depends. But as far as like the main birth kit, that's pretty basic for most people. And so anyway, I hope you guys enjoyed it. I hope it was beneficial. And let me know in the comment section if you found it beneficial or, or helpful. Um, or let me know also if you would add things personally if you would add more or less to your birth kit so anyway i hope you guys have a great week and i will see you guys in my next video have a great one bye